Hello, hello, here we are again at the NAM, the first virtual music fair in uh, the world at the NAM in uh, January 2021. Uh, it's a very nice experience. This is the um, tomorrow will be the, the last day actually, not today, uh, tomorrow and uh, we are nine hours ahead of Californian time so we always have to be uh, ready at about four in the afternoon until late at night to be uh, ready to answer questions and to get in touch with new people we are meeting there. Uh, it's all online, it's um, very interesting how the whole procedure works and uh, we are uh, four makers here from Cremona, Italy at the Cremona Pavilion and it is a very nice experience because nobody actually knew how things are proceeding. Today uh, Maestro Varazzani came here to see and uh, we were talking about it. I meet every day Daniele Tonarelli and uh, Trabuki is uh, pretty business with his association so uh, of the Craftsman Associazione Artigiani so he doesn't have that much time but I, I also hear via Daniele Tonarelli what he's doing and we are four makers and actually it's interesting to see how the four of us everybody is approaching this virtual fair in a different way and uh, it, it's nice to see how this whole thing works and how everybody is, is using these new technologies and uh, it's, it's a new experience, interesting, interesting. As you might know, I have every day here his son uh, Lee. She plays the violin definitely better than me, and I'm I'm very shy to show you how I play the violin, how I double check the sound, and uh, I'm more in making, and I I think it's better like this. You know, and I leave playing to musicians who qualify, and I do my things here. Um, here in the back side, these are Scala Perfetta, um, Guarnieri, now they are yellow, the, uh, the other days they were white. Marco was putting on a few layers, the other ones are ready to be shipped to uh, Korea. And uh, we were also playing a few, so if somebody wants to listen to them, I can show you the video and you can compare the sound of the ones which are ready to um, be um, delivered. And uh, we also made some videos about some violas. We will also record today something about with the viola, so you can listen to different uh, measurements of the uh, body length, which will be also interesting. And this short video here, um, we are recording today, and I thought I would just wanted to show you a little bit more in detail what we are actually doing here. And it is a little bit uh, similar to a video which I have on my YouTube channel where I showed you my last violin, which then afterwards I have sent to a customer. But now I just wanted to show you here a few books. And one is here, this one here, Cremona 1730-1750, um, The Violin Makers of Cremona. And it's untitled also Stradivari Guarnieri Bergonzi. And uh, this is a nice book which is made in uh, the, the violin making competition, the Fondazione Antonio Stradivari, and the Consortium of Violin Making made this book. For a long time I'd never looked inside. And then I discovered that in this book there is a Guarnieri inside. And the Guarnieri, I, which is inside in this book, is the Satan Guarnieri. So let me show you. Uh, in one hand I have the camera and in the other one I'm going to search the book. And this here is uh, search the, the violin. And this one here is now that I was try to show you as good as possible here. It's the Giuseppe Guarnieri del Gesù Saint Ton from 1744. So it's actually a very late one. And uh, if you look at this violin in the book also, you recognize that the top is very more narrow than the back, okay? And uh, it's a, a late Guarnieri because you can tell that of the scroll. If I flip over the page, here you have the body, a uh, closer look, the F holes which look a little bit like a guinea pig. 
and um, very rough violin where you can see that he slipped with the knife out of the channel and made a lot of holes and things like this. And here the scroll. And on the scroll here, for instance, you can see that it's very narrow, very high, this first part here, which you can also see here, very large area like this. And the second uh, um, turn of the scroll, the later the Guarniers are, the more they are very narrow here. His very first instruments were very similar to a Stradivari, the, the, the proportions of, of how you look at the scroll. And the later on he went, the more they became really very rough and very narrow, the, th the second turn of the scroll. Yeah? And now what I wanted to show you here, since you now look so close into the book, is actually my copy of the Saint on Guarnieri, right? So it's, it's easy to look at the book and it's easy to look at the violin, but now let's see at the violin and the book so you can see what I made out of this one, okay? Now, I try to show you my violin next to the book, okay? You can also see my fingers, but... So you have a little bit this Guarnieri scroll like this and in the book and then you can flip it over and you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it should be actually nice to see the wood, the, the small mm, spots and things like this from the front, how it looks from the side and I'm actually very proud how I made it. And even so, it is not a bench copy, because a bench copy, I saw during the fair that there are some people selling Chinese violin and they say this is a bench copy. A bench copy is very delicate to use. That means that you have the original in front of you and then you actually make a, a copy. So this one here is not a bench copy, it's very similar because I didn't have the original Saint on Guarnieri here in my workshop, okay? Um, my friend Florian Leonhardt in London, he sometimes makes a bench copy because in his workshop there are some of these originals when they are before they're, he's selling them to some new owners, then he makes a copy. This is a bench copy. Or Samuel Zygmuntovic in New York, when he restores an old instrument, then he makes a bench copy. Or customers come to them and say, hey, can you make a copy of my violin? Then that's a bench copy. What I do <coughs> is actually intentionally a different way of making. I make it a copy, but I always was attracted by the fact that when you look at it, that you actually can tell who made it. So the, many years ago there was a book about Guarnieri's and they, they, you saw all the copies of those Guarnieri's. And I liked it that you could see that uh, uh, Sanino made it in one way and another one made it in a different way. And you could tell it was made by this one or by Gada or by that. And that's, that's what I actually like. And I want that people see that this violin is made by Edgar and not that it is a, a fake Guarnieri. I think a fake Guarnieri is, is, is poor. Uh, I'm a pretty strong character and I love to make my, my violins, which will overlive my, myself and will age gracefully and will increase its value because this is something which I really think this is precious. It's to know who made it and to be able also to recognize it because I don't want to cancel my fingerprints of what I'm doing, okay? And that's something I really like. So here now I showed you only the scroll. Now I try, I just, I actually, I would need one more hand now to hold the violin, hold the camera, and also hold you up. But now we go, do our best here. And I just show you here, for instance, the top. I don't know if you can see that. Well, the picture here is too small and mine is bigger, but you can tell some, some areas like a certain corner, the upper corner if you look at it, okay? And then you say it on the book. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. I think this is fancy. 
or, or some things on the on the uh, on the perfiling here you can see on that corner before he reached with the knife the corner that he just made this cut and I made that also just like it is here in the book but still then there are a lot of other things tiny things which I make in a way that other makers London, New York, Tokyo, wherever Beijing, Shanghai, Taipei, whatever name it, can see, oh, this is a violin, this is original from Edgar. And um, that's something I really like. And this, I think, is just really something which takes me a lot of um, uh, energy and um, I love to do that, okay? So this is actually one violin and the other one I wanted to show you, this is, so the, this is my Guarneri Sainton and then I wanted to show you Min, Mina Mazzolari is my colleague here and she's a 10% uh, business partner here in my workshop as well because when she was a little girl, or little girl, when she was a student in uh, violin making school, I discovered her and I thought, hey, you have to make my, you have to work with me for longer. I don't want to teach you everything and then you run away. And now she's already over 20 years here. And she made the Guarneri high fats. Okay, so the Guarneri high fats is also a famous violin. It's in the book of Peter Bidolf which is the Guarneri high fats like this here. I can hope you can see it. It is from 1740, so it's a little, not that early like the Saint Ton, a little bit earlier, okay? And uh, here you have the body. I hope you can see that well. And the top. Usually in the books, the, all the instruments are printed a slightly too red, okay? And here you have also the ribs and the scroll. And now let's see the interpretation of that specific violin of Min. Uh, no, it's not here. It is. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, I'm here traveling with you all the way around. And this is now the violin of Min, okay? So here you have the scroll, which is from the front, pretty particular, I and mean, you can recognize it as the um, high fats Guarneri, okay? And then here on the back side, here the, the, the entire um, look of the violin, okay? the F holes, which are a little bit rounder, not so guinea pig-like, but more like a, yeah, Guarneri C, but the F holes are not so, so typical Guarneri, but once you know this violin, then you see these Guarneri F holes pretty often, uh, or you can recognize them. And here you can see this scroll, let's say. I don't know if you can see that, how this one is so nicely crafted. And the back side of the scroll, it's, uh, I don't know if you can see that, I just don't want to drop the violin, but I think it is just incredibly nice craftsman, a craftswoman, you say, actually. And uh, here, for, the, for instance, the back, I don't know if you can see that, but I think it's just wonderful. And, the owner, it's, it's already ordered that violin and uh, it's a lady and uh, she gets that violin very soon and it sounds beautiful. Now when I say it sounds beautiful, you say, oh, he talks too much, right? We go over there and we go and listen and his son will play us our two instruments, the Haifetz Guarneri and the Sainton. Okay, so I take those two violins. Now I didn't take my mask. Uh, I have to take it in my teeth here. This is a little bit difficult, but never mind. We do it like this, come on. And, uh, and I go back. 
I put the two violins, tipo sodale, questi due violini, tap e tap, ok. Um, sorry, I have to do like this here just for a sudden, and I have to take the mask and everything. Tu puoi metterne uno giù e intanto già accordare. Hmm? Io ti, ti metto questo purtroppo qui, un po' così. Vediamo un po'. Oh. So here you can see how we set up the whole thing here. Hold on. And then I have to take you out of this Manfrotto and we put you here high. You grade it up in a better uh, vision that you can see better what we are doing, let me see if you can see um, her very well. This is slightly inclined, so this is better. Okay. Um, you want to see maybe a little bit more like this, right? And uh, I have to put the other microphone like this, like this. Hold on. We just do it a little bit more like this, as much as we can. And then I turn off the fridge, which goes... Otherwise it's disturbing. And the heating I also turn off. So then we're freezing here a little bit, but we don't want to be disturbed. And this now is the violin of Mina Mazzolari, Guarnieri Haifetz, and his son Lee is playing it. I just go and fetch my mask, okay? And now we hear my master violin, the Guarnieri Saint Tommy. Okay, you want to give me the other one? Yeah? Mina Mazzolari and Edgar Rose Saint Tommy.
I think this was a nice trial. I don't make any comment on how, what sounds how. I think you should actually hear the difference. I could hear a nice difference and it's two different models, but actually the, 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 the level of, of making is very high and very similar. It's two different models. I know that the original Sainton is a little bit more difficult to play, but has also its advantages. Somehow I can imagine, even so mine I think is not difficult to play. I, I think it's, uh, it's easy and equilibrated. Yeah. But uh, it has a, 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 a kind of different sound compared to the high fat Guarnieri, which is from the size and the dimensions also a little bit bigger and generally speaking probably more loved as a, as a model itself. But it's always, you know, interesting to have some specific models. I, I like the, the Saint and to make it is really big fun. Yeah. Um, I think this is good for, for today, for this video here to show. And now we will record a different video, so then we can, uh, in order to uh, have uh, to, to satisfy the, the visitors' um, questions, we have some other videos to do. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Bye bye.